Hi, my name is Daniel Williams, and today I want to show you how to do two quick things with Corn SDK. There are a few things that you will need to get started. The first thing that you need is a blank file called main.lua, and you will also need an image called player.png. Player.png can be any image, but if you want to use the image that I'm using within this tutorial, you can download it from thatsopanda.com. Now go ahead and open up main.lua in your Corona simulator and then open it up in your favorite text editor. And let's start coding. The first thing that we wanna do is add the image to our game. So we need to define a variable. So we'll put local, my player, and then we will assign this variable a function. We'll put equals display dot new image R-E-C-T. And this function right here is telling Corona to add an image to our game. Within this function, we have to define a few parameters. The first parameter that we need to define is the image path to our image. So we'll put player.png. After that, we need to define the width, which will be 66, and the height, which will be 92. If we save our information here, we will see our player has been added to the top left corner. By default, Corona adds all new display objects to the top left corner of your app. However, we can move our player by defining the X and the Y location. So we'll hit enter just once, and we'll put my player dot X equals 100, and hit enter one more time, and put my player dot Y equals 125. Now if we hit save, we will see our player has been moved to the right and down a little bit, so now we can see the full player on the screen. The way Corona works is it has X axis and Y axis. The X axis runs right and left, and the Y axis runs up and down. The top left corner is considered zero, zero, and then as you move right or down, the numbers will get bigger. So in our case, we have defined the X axis for our player to be 100, and we have defined the Y axis for our player to be 125. By defining 100 comma 125 for our player, we are making our player visible on the screen. The next thing I wanna show you is actually how to move that player within our game. So let's hit enter twice, and let's create a new function called transition dot two. This is a function that takes a few parameters. The first parameter is the object that we wanna move, so that's gonna be my player, and the second parameter that it accepts will be a table. Within this table, and a table is defined by curly braces, within this table, we will define the ending location of the X and Y axis. So we'll put X equals 250, comma, Y equals 250. So if we hit save, and I will not hit save yet, I just wanna show you what's gonna happen. But as soon as we do hit save, our player will move from this location down to the right, down to right about here. Because by saying transition.2, we're saying move this object to this location. Now let's go ahead and hit save. And as we hit save, you saw our image fairly quickly move to the bottom right to this new location. The next thing that we can do is actually define how long that transition will take. So after our y-axis definition, let's put comma time equals 2000. Chrono works with all time elements as milliseconds. So for this case, we have 2000, and that is 2000 milliseconds. And since 1000 milliseconds equals one second, we are telling Chrono that this transition should take two seconds. Now if we hit save, the transition will take a lot longer. Or if we wanna add a one here to make it 12 seconds, our transition will take 12 seconds to move from the 100 comma 125 to the 250 comma 250. And that's it for adding an image to our game and moving the image within our game. Thank you so much for watching.